Hello, George Romanich here. Today we are going to answer one of the most important questions for our everyday life. What is a temperature of a gas? You are watching this video in your room, car, park, somewhere, and you are surrounded by the air. That air has temperature. Hopefully, that temperature is comfortable for you, and you are sitting in that environment, enjoying it. But what is that temperature? What does it represent? Well, I will tell you right away. It's an average value of the jiggling of atoms around you. Air is made up of atoms of different kinds. 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, about 1% or so argon. There is also some uh, helium and so on. Water vapor, perhaps. And so on. All these molecules and atoms are constantly moving around, jiggling. An average, and we will see what sort of average in this video, but an average of that jiggling is what we call temperature. If they are jiggle a lot, that means high temperature. If the jiggling is sluggish, they don't do it very much, then we say it's a low temperature of that gas. And the same principle actually applies to other types of substances, such as solids as well as liquids. It's always jiggling of the atoms. That is quantitative description of temperature in the context of kinetic theory of gases. But now, which is not so easy task, which is not so easy task, we need to dwell into formalities of physics and mathematics and derive the concept of temperature in a rigorous and precise way. Let us do it. Let us start this video by discussing the following situation. We have a container and there is a piston separating two different gases. Here we have gas that we will call 1 and here we have gas 2. Here is the piston between, let's say that N, what we define in my video on pressure, is the number of atoms in container per unit volume, and each of these containers, or rather boxes in this container, has its own volume. So he here we have N1 of these uh, atoms per unit volume and here we have N2 per unit volume and of course these are all moving in random direction all these atoms some of them hit the piston some of them collide with the other walls some of them collide with other atoms and so on on my video on uh, pressure we saw that the equilibrium will be achieved if the bombardment of these molecules on the left side is equal to the bombardment of the piston of the molecules on the right side. And we said that's the equilibrium of pressures. P1 is equal to P2. But pressures, that means internal energies per unit volume are equal if the pressures are equal. Or in other words, we saw that pressure was equal 2 over 3 N, for example, pressure in gas 1, uh, N1, times the average M V1 squared divided by 2, average kinetic energy. And if P1 is equal P2, it means this needs to be equal N2, 2 over 3, average m v2 squared divided by 2. And this is condition, which is of course p2. And this is the condition of equal pressures. But this is not the only condition for equilibrium in this system. Suppose that the pressure p1 is uh, caused by very high number of atoms, so high density, but they are moving very slow. On the other hand, in container 2, box 2, we only have few atoms, but they are very energetic, fast moving. 
The question is, is this situation sustainable on the long run? The answer is no. Because when these fast-moving atoms collide with the piston, they shake the piston a little bit, and they shake it more at this particular location than the atoms on the other side, which means when they shake the piston here, the piston carries that jiggle to these atoms, and the atom that hits the the atom on the left side that hits the piston over here returns with the more energy compared to what it had before hitting the piston because it acquired energy through the piston from the atoms in the right box. After billions and billions of collisions, or what we like to say, after sufficiently long time, this piston will jiggle in a way that it transfers energy from these fast-moving atoms in box 2 to slow-moving atoms in box 1. This also, of course, due to the conservation of energy, means that these fast-moving atoms in container 2 are now going to slow down because they gave part of their energy to the atoms in container 1. So, now let us analyze this situation further, but let's not look into the piston, but into the collision of two atoms. Let us say that here we have atom 1 that is going to collide with atom number 2. This one has mass m1, this one m2, this one has velocity v1, and uh, let's say even this one has velocity v2. Now, this part of the video will contain some of the key arguments for the definition of temperature. This collision between these two atoms is the way I presented it here. But because over here there are billions and billions of atoms, and that's the assumption of kinetic theory of gases, this collision is equally likely to happen from this direction. That number one was here and colliding from this direction. It is also equally likely, because look, all of them are moving in any given direction. It is equally likely that number one approached from this direction. Or it could also happen that if V1 is larger than V2, it is coming from behind catching up with 2 and colliding with 2. Because there are billions of these collisions, one can conclude that there is no preferred direction of collision between these atoms. And we can demonstrate that even quantitatively, which is important. Let's say that theta is angle between velocity vectors v1 and v2. Now, we ask ourselves, what is the dot product V1 dot V2? Well, that is intensity of V1, which I will write like this without vector, intensity V2 times cosine of this angle theta. But again, we go back to the key assumption of kinetic theory of gases that says don't look into just one collision. Look at billions and billions of collisions and then average them. So what we want to do is to look at this expression, but average over many, many collisions, or we could say sufficiently long time. Well, that will mean that this equation becomes average v1 dot v2 is equal average v1 average v2 average cosine of this angle theta. But we just said that this, so these are finite numbers, but what about theta? Theta, as you can see, can take any value along this circle, because collision can be from this direction, this direction, this, this, from, from this direction, and so on. 
So we will demonstrate that this term collapses to zero. And to do that, I will use what I demonstrated in one of the previous videos, and that is that the average of a function on an interval a to b is 1 divided b minus a integral from a to b f of x, let's say, dx. That's the definition of an average of a function. So let's apply that to this. So average of cosine theta on the interval between 0 all the way to 2 pi is 1 divided by 2 pi minus 0, that's 2 pi, integral 0 to 2 pi cosine theta d theta. And uh, I'm not going to waste my time here demonstrating that this is zero because integral of cosine is sine and sine in the limits zero to two pi is zero, which means from these two arguments that the average, uh, average of the dot product V1 dot V2 is zero. And this is very important finding that we will use throughout this video. This also means that on average there is no correlation between vectors v1 and v2. Let us look at this collision from the center of mass coordinate system. If we look into this first of potential cases, let's say that the center of mass is somewhere here in the middle, In my previous video, I went into great length to demonstrate that the center of mass is the best choice of the reference system, usually, because whatever the center of mass was doing before the collision, it will be doing after the collision. If we have collision of billions of particles, the center of mass stays unchanged in terms of the velocity. Of course, it can move, because uh, if there is some prevailing velocity of the center of mass, it will move at that velocity, but it will never change velocity due to collisions. And I derived in the previous video that velocity of the center of mass is equal m1 v1 plus uh, m2 v2 divided by m1 plus m2 if we have two particles. If we have million particles, it will be million uh, contributions to the center of mass. We also saw in previous video, but we can clearly see in this video, that we can define the so-called relative velocity between particle 1 and particle 2, and that will simply be v1 minus v2. What I would like, before going any further, is to combine these two expressions. You see, this expression tells me that there is no correlation between vectors v1 and v2 on average. You see, this expression tells me that there is no correlation on average between v1 and v2 because v2 could be from any direction in respect to v1, or vice versa, v1 could be on average coming from any direction in respect to v2. But that also means, therefore, that the relative velocity, which is simply v1 minus v2, v1 minus v2, and any other direction in the flow in this gas, will also, on average, have no correlation. So let's say any other direction, d, I don't know. So there will be no correlation between this relative velocity, q, and any other direction, because there was no correlation between v1 and v2, and there is nothing special about v1 and v2. When we establish this, I want to combine these two to deliver the punchline. And the punchline is the following. Because there is 
uh, sorry, uh, here is not comma, here is dot. I mean dot product. The punchline is because dot product between Q, relative velocities, and any velocity in this gas is zero, it must be for the velocity of the center of mass 2. This is the argument used by Maxwell when he was deriving this entire theory, among other people, with Bolt, uh, Boltzmann also contributed and so on. But this is the main argument. Believe it or not, this is the condition for the equilibrium in terms of temperatures. Now, this is probably not the form of the condition that you often see, but I will demonstrate shortly that this is indeed the condition that uh, average kinetic energies in the gas 1 and gas 2 need to be the same if the temperatures are the same. So let us do that. To do that, I will just substitute Q and Vcm into this equation. And I will get, therefore, that this over here is further equal. Average Q is V1 minus V2 dot, uh, let's put that in bracket, dot velocity of the center of mass, that is M1 V1 plus M2 V2 divided by M1 plus M2 average over large number of particles. If you don't average over the large number of particles, then none of this is true. But this is further equal. Let's see. So we will have here M1 plus M2. This times this will be M1 V1 squared minus this M2 V2 squared, so I'm doing square terms first, plus M2 V1 V2, M2 V1 dot V2, and uh, minus M1 V1 dot V2. And again, all this averaged. Well, this is further equal, average, m1 v1 squared minus m2 v2 squared plus m2 minus m1 v1 dot v2 in the bracket, of course, divided by m1 plus m2. But now, look, I just demonstrated that this one needs to be zero on average. So this term over here must go to zero, which means average of m1 v1 squared uh, minus m2 v2 squared divided by m1 plus m2 needs to be zero. This can only be zero if the nominator is zero, and that means average of m1 uh, v1 squared is equal average m2 v2 squared. Or we definitely like to write this in terms of kinetic energy, so we multiply by one over two, and we get that average 1 over 2 m1 v1 squared needs to be equal average 1 over 2 m2 v2 squared. And this, my dear viewers, is the condition for equilibrium and equal temperatures in two gases. If we have gas 1 and gas 2, 
they have the same temperatures if and only if the average kinetic energy in gas 1 is equal average kinetic energy in gas 2. This means that heavy atoms on average move slower than light atoms. After watching this you have a clear concept of what is temperature of a gas. Now, if we go back to this barometer, you can see there is difference in the height of the liquid inside of the container, outside of the container. Liquid is just water with food dye. There is atmospheric pressure coming in, pushing on the liquid through this opening over here and inside is also the value of atmospheric pressure and they are adjusted in a way that liquid has this difference in height. In one of the previous videos I explained what will happen when I add internal energy to the air inside of the container. Now I can use the concept of temperature because we know what temperature is. I place my hand over this container and now I can say finally I am increasing the temperature of the air inside of this container. As I am doing that notice how the liquid is rising because thanks to the equation of state that we just saw I am also increasing the pressure. As the temperature is increasing the volume of this container is the same pressure must increase and pressure must increase means that the air inside of this container is pushing the water down more than the atmosphere is pushing it from this side and the pressure gradient force is consequently moving this column of water up. If we add even more heat or consequently increase temperature even more I think I can even make this water overflow this tube. We are very close as you can see. It's uh, there but okay let's not push it. So you understand now that temperature, pressure and volume are intimately related and what I did is I supplied internal energy. But that means I increased jiggling. The atoms inside of this container are jiggling more than they were before I placed my hand. And now if I let this system alone, the jiggling starts disappearing because energy is lost to the environment, to the atmosphere. There is exchange of energy across this glass. And you can see that the column of water is getting going down because pressure inside is decreasing. And it is decreasing because temperature is decreasing. And temperature is decreasing because internal energy is getting smaller and smaller. And you can see this on the height of the water column over here. Of course, we could go even further with our demonstrations. We take infamous experimental platform. I take this uh, Uh, tea pot heater. Here is a small candle, fire. Don't play with fire. Okay, fire is on. Let me do, you see I'm doing these things in real time. There we go. Now this is like in those books when they say oh you add heat to something. Now we are adding heat to this system. We are heating up this 
water. Firstly, this glass, the glass is heating water and water should start heating this air. And that means we should increase pressure. So let us see what will happen. Whoa, look, look how it is rising. Look how the column started going back. I hope you can see that on your camera. Let's be patient. Because what else do you have to do? Play video games, Counter-Strike, watch beauty blogger videos. I mean, this is demonstration of physics 101. Yeah, it is steadily increasing. Ah, physics is beautiful. And especially when you understand what is going on inside the atoms are jiggling. As the heat is supplied, we are delivering more internal energy to these atoms and they are jiggling more and more. Some of them jiggle even more than the average velocity of jiggling, some of them less. But the average of all that jiggling is what we call temperature. And we say we are increasing temperature of the air inside of this container. And you can see how this column of water with food dye inside is steadily increasing. Let us stay together and uh, a little bit more to see if we can uh, maybe even make this water overflow this pipe. We are here close to the moment of truth. The water will overflow because the pressure inside of the container is higher than the pressure in my room and that's because atoms inside of this container are jiggling more than the atoms in my room on average. Look, I see the top of the water. We are there. We are there. Surface tension, some other topic. I can see a drop forming thanks to surface tension, but surface tension will not be able to sustain the pressure difference. Uh, there we go. The water is overflowing. The water is overflowing. Look. I hope you can see it on camera. And we demonstrated 101 the concept of temperature in a gas and how it directly relates to pressure and volume. Until next video, goodbye.